you know, for the longest time, black characters on TV shows always either portray the roles of being poor or working for white people or just being saved by white people. For example, right? Shows like um, Give Me a Break with Nell Carter, she played a nanny to a white family. Different Strokes with Arnold and Willis, they were taken in by a millionaire named Philip Drummond after their mother died. The show Benson, he, he was a butler at a governor's mansion, but Benson did elevate to something bigger on the show. The show Webster, he was taken in by a white family after his parents were killed. And Good Times and Sanford and Son, they was just straight up poor. But one show called The Jeffersons showed a different side of black people moving on up in the world on their own. Now see, producer Norman Lear created the show Sanford and Son in Good Times, right? And, and he ended up getting approached by some Black Panther members who told him, why can't he make a show about successful Black people instead of poor Black people all the time? The Black Panthers, they put the pressure on him, which made him come up with the show The Jeffersons, which really was created by a guy named Eric Monty. I'm going to actually do a video on Eric Monty because he's the one who really created all these shows. But anyway, now, the story of the Jeffersons, that show just showed us how to invest your money because when George Jefferson received a 3200 insurance settlement after a car accident, he quit his job as a janitor at an apartment complex and used the cash to purchase a dry cleaning store. Also, that show was the first sitcom to feature an interracial married couple. And for a long time, it was the longest running black family sitcom on television until it was surpassed by Tyler Perry's House of Pain by one episode. Sherman Hemsley, he changed the game, the way he walked, the way he talked, and the way he danced, portraying the role of George Jefferson. Dang, ain't gonna wait, let's get into it, right? Now, Sherman Hemsley was born February 1st, 1938 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, growing up in South Philly, he was the only child and raised by his mother, aunt and grandmother and never met his father until he was 14 years old. As a young child, he started acting in school plays and in church doing all types of characters. By the time he became a teenager, he was running with a street gang called the 20th Street Gang and getting into a lot of trouble. Now, after seeing all his friends dying and going to jail, he decided to change his life by dropping out of high school in the 10th grade and joining the Air Force. Once he got out of the Air Force after four years of service, he enrolled to the Philadelphia Academy of Dramatic Arts School because he didn't want to go back into the street life. He also got a job at the post office to support himself while he figured out his next move. That's when he looked in the newspaper one day and saw they needed some actors for a local play because that was his real passion and dream to be an actor. Now, after trying out, he ended up landing roles in a bunch of plays in Philly and wanted to take his career to the next level. That's when he got a job transfer to New York hoping to land some bigger gigs in acting. Now, once he got in New York, he started getting more acting gigs, but he still would work his post office job in the morning and perform and do plays at night. And that's when he joined the Negro Ensemble Company, which is a bunch of workshops that help actors get roles in theater, television, and films. And you know, a lot of actors came from that company too, like, um, Roxy Roca, who played Helen Willis on the show, John Amos, who played James Evans on Good Times, Antonio Fargus, Samuel L. Jackson, Esther Rowe, and many more also had joined that company to jumpstart their career. But anyway, now, once he joined the Negro Assemble Company, 
he landed a role in the Broadway play called Pearly Victorious as an Uncle Tom character named Gitlo. During one of his shows, legendary producer Norman Lear, who at the time had the show Sanford and Son, Good Times, Maud, and All in the Family was there, and he was impressed with Sherman's acting skills. After the show, he told Sherman whenever he comes to California, call his office because he had a job for him. Years later, while still touring, during the Pearly Broadway play, Sherman finally made it to California and gave Norman Lear a call. Once they met up, Norman Lear wanted him to do an audition for a role which was going to be part for his sitcom, All in the Family. Now, he actually wrote that role George Jefferson for Sherman to play ever since he first saw him in the Broadway play Pearly and they had been looking for him anyway to call because see at the time All in the Family was the hottest show out with over 60 million viewers a week and they already had Isabel Sanford who played uh, Wheezy Jefferson and Mike Evans who played Lionel Jefferson on the show and for three years on the show they always used to mention George Jefferson's name on the show but he just never came over to Archie Bunker's house now when Sherman auditioned, he thought he was going to read for the show Sanford and his Son. But when he did his audition down at the CBS studios, Carol O'Connor, who played Archie Bunker with no hesitation, told Norman Lear that Sherman was the best man for the part. Now, at first, Sherman was kind of iffy about taking the role because in real life, that wasn't him. He wasn't a loudmouth, bigot, feisty type of person. He's really a shy, introvert, quiet type of guy. Isabel Sanford, aka Wheezy Jefferson, didn't like him at first because she wanted a tall guy to play her husband. And she was disappointed by how unattractive and small he was, but eventually they, they clicked. Plus, in real life, she was way older than Sherman Hemsley, about 20 years. She was born in 1917 and he was born in 1938. Now, once he appeared on the show All in the Family, the people loved him and the ratings started to rise. By the fourth episode with George Jefferson in it, that's when Norman Lear decided to do a spin-off show called The Jeffersons, which was about an African-American couple who moved from Queens to Manhattan owning a successful dry cleaning business. The rest of the cast they recruited was Roxy Roker, who played Helen Willis, in which I didn't know was the mother of rock star Lenny Kravitz. That's a fact I didn't know. They also casted Franklin Cover, who played Tom Willis, Paul Benedict, who played Mr. Bentley, Berlinda Tolbert, who played Jenny, Ned Wertimer as Ralph the Doorman, and Marla Gibbs, who played the maid Florence Johnston. And another fact is I didn't know that uh, Jeanette Du Bois, who played Wilona Woods on Good Times, did the theme song for the show. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Anyway, now, on January 18th, 1975, the Jefferson's first episode aired on CBS, and the ratings, they weren't bad. They was all right, but they, they weren't bad. But people loved the show, though especially the black people because it was like motivation for us to see a black man own his own business and they loved the way George Jefferson walked in the building with that cool walk <laughs> in an interview he said that uh that's the way they used to walk in South Philly and while on the set of the Jefferson show they had done about seven or eight takes and then he just started clowning around and that's the one they kept the way he was walking but as the show progressed, the ratings it started getting higher and higher. And the show became in the top 10 until it finally became the number one show on TV with over 30 million viewers weekly, beating the news show 60 Minutes. And that's when people realized that not only black people watched the show, but white people loved the show too. Now with a hit show under his belt, that's when the money started pouring in and Sherman Hemsley was loving his newfound fame. 
Jack A. Harry, who played Sandra on 227, was good friends with him too. And she said uh, one time her and Sherman was walking one day and people just went crazy and started trying to mug him and swarm all around him. And he didn't even know why. He didn't even know he was popular like that. Now with Star, that's when the rumors started coming out saying that he had an acid lab in his house and he was into drugs. According to David Allen of the rock band Gong, who Sherman Hemsley was a fan of, he liked that, uh, that rock and roll music stuff. But in an interview, Sherman said he was a health nut and he was always drinking carrot juice and he used to fast for days to stay in shape. Now, the Jefferson show was so hot, they even did a spinoff for Marla Gibbs, who played Florence, the maid, on the show. They called the show Checking In, but the show was canceled after only four episodes, and Florence returned back to the Jeffersons. And then problems just started coming with the show, like when Mike Evans, who played Lionel, left the show to work on the show Good Times, but he eventually came back. He came back and forth on the show. And then they kept changing the time slots of the show, which made it hard for people to find them on TV. Their time slot got changed like 15 times and they still was in the top 10. But check this. Then they just took the show completely off the air for no reason, without a finale or nothing. Sherman Hemsley and the rest of the cast said they didn't even know the show was gone till they read the newspaper and saw that the show was canceled after 11 seasons. Norman Lear, the producer of the show, didn't call them or tell the cast nothing. Later on, it came out that they got rid of the show because the ratings were slipping. That's what they say. But I think uh, Norman Lear was focusing more on the Cosby show who was starting to become big. Now, after that, Sherman got all types of offers for other shows to star in and he ended up taking a role as Deacon Ernest Fry, a church deacon on the sitcom Amen, which ran for about five seasons. And I love the show Amen, especially Riley. <laughs> Riley always has something smart to say. Did y'all know Riley? Riley was 90 years old when he took that role. And he used to be on the Amos and Andy show. That's back in the, I want to say the 40s or 50s. Man, that's crazy. Now, also around that time, right, Sherman was into music. Yeah, Sherman Hemsley, he, he did music too because a lot of people didn't know he was a jazz keyboardist. And he released a single called Ain't That a Kick in the Head. I remember him performing that song on Soul Train. I was laughing like crazy, man, at the way he was dancing on stage. And I, th I think he did a whole dance album too, he released. He was an all-around talented guy, man. Now, after Amen got canceled, he started doing other shows. He did voiceovers for the ABC live action puppet series called Dinosaurs. And I remember that show too. I used to like that show too. But later in his career, he would appear in numerous TV shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Martin, The Wayne Brothers, um, Family Matters, Tyler Perry's House of Pain. He did a lot of shows, man, during that time. He was also doing commercials for uh, The Gap, Denny's, Old Navy, just, just trying to stay busy and trying to make money. But in 2005, he faced some hard financial times and he had to sell the rights to collect his residuals for his TV show's reruns. Also around that time, he had moved to El Paso, Texas with his business partners, Kenny Johnston, and Flora Inchington, and they all lived in the house together. But on July 24th, 2012, Sherman Hemsley died at his home in El Paso, Texas from a form of lung cancer. Now the story goes, a month earlier, he had developed a swelling in his face and his friend slash manager named Flora Inchington took him to the emergency room. After the doctors ran some tests and drew blood, that's when the doctor told him everything looked good. But then the second doctor told him that 
they had discovered a large mass on his right lung. But the crazy part is, Sherman was a health nut, man. He was into health, and all of his friends said he was one of the healthiest people they knew, and always preaching about health and diet to them, and he was never sick. He ate organic fruit and vegetables. He was always juicing and working out, exercising. I mean, you know that a form of lung cancer. He stopped smoking years ago when he was in his teens. It's just crazy because he was diagnosed in early June. A month later, he was dead. The doctor said there was nothing they could do because it was a rare cancer and told him he only had a month to live and wanted him to do chemotherapy, but he refused because he was a spiritual person. See, Sherman was a, a spiritual person and he didn't believe in none of that treatment. He always said, uh, if he put that in his body, that's like putting poison in your body because he was a healthy guy. Plus, he didn't even feel sick. And that's the thing he couldn't understand. They say he got cancer, but he don't feel sick. The doctors that worked on him was the same doctor who worked on Flora Incheton's mother, father, and brother who both passed away from cancer. Now, now here's the crazy part to this whole thing, right? After he died, his body was refrigerated for three and a half months on ice because of a dispute between his business manager, Flora, who he lived with at the time of his death, and a long lost half brother who each claimed the right to dispose of his remains. Now, a month before he died, Sherman made his business manager, Flora, the sole beneficiary of his estate, which was valued at $50,000. And she wanted to have a military funeral for him. But see, when his body got to the morgue, the medical examiner used Sherman's cell phone to locate his next akin. So the medical examiner called Richard Thornton, his half brother. Now see, they had the same dad and Richard Thornton wanted Sherman to be buried in Pennsylvania, his hometown. So, so he filed a civil lawsuit disputing the validity of the will that Sherman wrote to his business manager floor. And, and Richard Thornton had to take a DNA test and everything and which turned out to prove he was Sherman's half brother and closest blood relative. But then a third person came out <laughs> and got in the mix named Reverend Michael George Wells, who said he was a cousin on Sherman's mother's side and the closest family member to him. Now, the cousin and the brother both said he should be buried in his hometown and they don't think Sherman was in his right state of mind when he put that will together, which was one month before he died. They also stated that they're not doing this for money, but they are fighting his business manager, Flora, for royalties from his television career. Now, all of, the, all of that drama was the reason that it took almost four months to bury Sherman Hemsley. After all that fighting and everything, the court judge finally ruled in Flora Incheton's favor, claiming that the will that Sherman wrote is valid and he was finally buried. That's crazy, man. It's crazy. And you know, man, Sherman Hemsley, he was never married. He didn't have any children. And he was a very private person about his personal life. And there were rumors of his sexuality now in 2007 vh1 they listed uh three of your favorite allegedly gay black actors from the past and they put sherman hemsley on the top of the list but his manager uh flora incheton when she was asked the question she said no he wasn't I mean, I know him and his manager, Kenny Johnston, were roommates for over 30 years, you know, but hey. Overall, in his career, he was probably one of the most underrated actors of all time. He was nominated for an Emmy in 1984 
and a Golden Globe Award in 1985 for the Jeffersons. And he won an NAACP Image Award in 1982. In 2012, he was inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame. In 2019, talk show host Jimmy Kimmel did a live recreation of the shows All in the Family and the Jeffersons. Jamie Foxx played George Jefferson. Wanda Sykes played Wheezy Jefferson. Kerry Washington played Helen Willis. And Will Ferrell played Tom Willis. Jennifer Hudson, she did the theme song to the uh, to the show. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Sherman Hemsley was 74 years old. R.I.P. To the legend, Sherman Hemsley. <laughs>